Hi, welcome to this series about packet fence. Today we're going to perform the initial setup. I'll start up the web configurator. I'm going to specify HTTPS. I'm going to put in the IP address and port 1443. And as you can see, packet fence automatically pulled my default gateway address the host name and my DNS server again for my default gateway. Now it says here that at least one interface must be of type management. So I'm going to hit detect management interface. And now my ethernet zero will be my management interface. I'm gonna go to the next step. Database, I can create my own, or I can leave this on for automatic configuration. The domain name of the packet fence system will be packetfence.org. Of course, it needs to be changed, but for demo purposes, it's okay. And the host name I will keep as packet fence. I can also change the time zone and I can send anonymous data, which I will choose not to do at this point. In alerting, I can specify which recipients I want to notify, and I can perform an SMTP and email test. My user will remain admin, and I will need to pick a new password. Now this will not replace the root password that we chose before. This is a new password for the administrator. Next step. It's going to ask me if I want to use FingerBank. Now, I don't have an API key for FingerBank, but I want to take a second and talk about FingerBank. FingerBank allows packet fence to get a wider signature base of different operating system and different devices. This is how packet fence can identify those devices. I'm not going to get exactly into how FingerBank does this, but just know it's a huge database that will allow for really any kind of uh, not just a, a network access control, but also an IPS, an IDS, uh, even Nmap uses something like FingerBank in order to identify different devices based on some type of fingerprint, some type of um, identifying characteristics that they send out uh, on the wire. Now again, I chose the automatic database, so it's giving me here all of the different usernames and passwords that were assigned. So I'm going to copy these and I'm going to start packet fence. And now I'm going to be prompt to log in again as an admin. And that's it. In the next videos, we'll see more of the options that packet fence has to offer. I'll see you next time. Hey, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to also check the bell icon to make sure you get notifications about new videos just as they come out.